continuing with the series on embedded TDD, test-driven development, using the TI MSP430 Launchpad. This is the first program which is actually going to do something. We're going to calculate the Fibonacci series in assembly language. The first thing that I did was to actually refactor the red, green, and yellow states by putting a delay cycle of one second inside it because I noticed that we always need to put a delay so that we can actually see the state. Most probably as we go along, I will refactor this even more as I uh, see my needs, what is easier, like in the original version, the ARM version that I've done, I just put a while true for the red state, and so if any test failed, we would stop there. Um, however, I have decided this time to use LEDs, and um, I have a normal um, Fibonacci in C using loop for test and I have written the very first few tests and um, as I'm fib so zero is zero and I'm checking that one is one and two is one and then after that I check it for the first 15 and in here um, now MSP430 in C has um, 60, 16 bits so I think I should change everything in a second I will refactor and change everything to unsigned int so that I have um, larger values and here is the assembly and at this moment I am making sure that it always fails no matter what happens by giving it a bad value and I am going to compile it and load it it's previously still debugging And at this moment, I'm only testing one test. Once that test passes, I will then go to the next test. This is um, the way to do it. In the previous versions, I was doing all the tests because they were actually testing the system. And this test fails. So I go here and make sure that this first test passes. So I'm just going to return zero. mark or the pound mark. Let's do it again and load it. Go here and run it. And this time the test passed. So I'm going to do the next test. Compile. Run. And the test failed. I am going to make the second test 
paths. And this time the first test failed. I want to do this in order to show that one of the good things about test-driven development is the fact that all the tests allow you to do regression tests. So I made the second test pass, but now my first test has failed. And I think um, I'm going to put it on pause and make sure everything passes and come back. I started writing the code just now and it should work for the first two tests. So I'm going to run it. And it does pass. So I will add my next test. And this should fail. By the way, the change I made was to, if it is less than one, we just return the value. So for one and for zero, we are going to return one and zero respectively. However, for two, we are going to end up returning two because we didn't do anything to R12. And sure enough, this test fails. There we go, and I'm going to test it. And it passed.